Hello, and welcome to the e-learning Intelligent Valve Commissioning. As you can see on the left-hand side, there is an overview of all chapters and topics we have prepared for you. The Intelligent Valve optimizes the energy efficiency as it did on the first day. This means significant energy cost savings with no additional effort. It compensates the dynamic pressure fluctuations in the hydraulic system and keeps the room temperature constant. It offers flexible installation options and fast commissioning. Furthermore, a report can be created for data analysis. The intelligent valve offers four control functions. In this training, we will focus on the most commonly used function, control valve. Two types of intelligent valves, flange and thread, with a range of dimensions, are available to perfectly meet the customer job site specification. From the diagram below, simply select one of the corresponding valves according to the required volume flow called VMAX. Let's have a look at the common components. The temperature sensor pair is used to measure the temperature in the primary flow and return. The ultrasonic flow sensor feeds the intelligent valve controller with the present volume flow. The Intelligent Valve Controller provides dynamic flow control and energy monitoring. To do so, it integrates the temperature difference and present flow signals to calculate the present power output and provide precise volume flow control by steering the high-resolution actuator to precisely set the control valve position. The Intelligent Valve is a field device and, as a control valve, it receives its set point from the HVAC controller. The Intelligent Valve provides two connection types, analog and Ethernet. Synco, Dezigo, TXIO, or a third-party controller can be connected to the analog terminal. The two Ethernet ports support BACnet IP to connect Dezigo or third-party systems. Data is provided to the management level over BACnet IP or the Siemens Cloud Link to the building operator. With the free ABT Go app, you can commission the valve directly via wireless LAN. The app also lets you start the flow test and view the test results. Rely on maximum installation flexibility with the Intelligent Valve. The compact installation where the flow sensor the controller and valve are installed together if there is sufficient space on the manifold. The controller box can be mounted parallel or perpendicular to the pipe. Alternatively, install the flow sensor and controller box in the flow pipe. In fact, the controller can even be separated from the flow sensor and mounted to the wall. The controller features color-coded plug-in terminals for easy installation. Let's look at the steps to commission an intelligent valve. Once the intelligent valve has been installed and powered up, it automatically detects the flow sensor and actuator. To configure and commission the intelligent valve, establish a connection to the controller and log in with the user specialist. Depending on the country organization, the hydronic balancing may be done by another agent. In this case, logging in with the user installer gives the rights to perform hydronic balancing, but not carry out any commissioning. In the Operation menu, set point present values and possible errors can be checked. The Operation menu can be accessed by all users. Three connection options are possible. WLAN via an integrated access point in the intelligent valve, network via wireless router, or USB direct. The access point of the intelligent valve is in enrollment mode within 10 minutes after restart or when manually pressing the button. Enrollment mode is indicated by the blue flashing LED. If more than one intelligent valve is installed, check the SSID number you are connecting to. The SSID consists of the device type and the serial number. When the mobile device is connected, the blue LED is steadily on. 
Any attempt to connect additional mobile devices are blocked by the access point. Each intelligent valve in the network needs to have a unique IP address. It can obtain an IP address from a router that has DHCP enabled, or, as is common practice, a fixed IP address must be assigned as described in the chapter network node setup. The network connection is indicated by a green LED. In contrast to a connection over the access point, more than one mobile device can connect over the WLAN router to the same intelligent valve. The third option is a USB connection for which there is no LED indication. The required OTG on the GO adapter needs to be plugged into the mobile device and not the intelligent valve. The Android and Apple ABT GO apps support the connection as shown. MSTP is not supported for intelligent valve, but rather for other devices on the same platform. Let's demonstrate how convenient a connection to the device access point can be. Make sure that the access point is in enrollment mode by verifying that the blue LED is flashing. The SSID of Intelligent Valve appears in the mobile phone WLAN connection list. Tap the SSID and enter the default password 12345678. Ignore the pop-up message stating there is currently no internet connection. Start the ABT Go app and enter the account information. Continue to the connection window. Select the connection mode and connect to the valve. Bypass the WLAN connection list and switch to the app where you will see the intelligent valve. Tap the valve and log in by entering the user role and the default password. The first time you log in, you are forced to enter a new password. After the new password is set, it leads you to the dashboard. Tap Configuration. The Configuration menu comprises basic configuration, network settings, and maintenance options. Tap Basic Configuration. In the Basic Configuration, the user defines how set point and feedback are transmitted from the automation level controller to the intelligent valve. Except that the controller restarts and the application is stopped until the basic configuration is completed. For the time being, the valve is closed in order to prevent thermal damage to the hydraulic system. After restarting, your mobile device should automatically reconnect to the valve. If not, select the Intelligent Valve's SSID in the WLAN connection list and retry to connect. The set point signal is transmitted from the automation level controller to the Intelligent Valve either as an analog signal over BACnet or, in the future, over Modbus. In the case of analog, the signal relative volume flow is an input received at terminal X1 using the default setting relative set point terminal. The default signal type is set to 0 to 10 volts, but you can select 2 to 10 volt or 4 to 20 milliamps as well. By default, the set point represents the volume flow between 0 and 100%. The Universal Output X2 can be configured to provide a feedback. X2 is an analog value that can represent several data points, for example, the volume flow, valve position, or present power. The signal type for the relative volume flow output 
offers the same options as with Terminal X1. The output signals over BACnet are always transmitted to the automation level with no configuration necessary. Terminal X3 will provide input options based on pressure and temperature in the future. By applying the basic configuration, the controller restarts. Even if no configuration changes were made, it is still necessary to apply the configuration. After the restart, the intelligent valve is released and will follow the set point. Next, let's configure the network node parameters. Change the device name according to the plant schematic. For instance, concrete core cooling. Try to keep the name as short as possible by using abbreviations in order to prevent long file names for backup and the self-test report. Give the device a unique instance number. As an example, use the last three digits of the IP address. Change the UDP port number if required. By default, the intelligent valve obtains an IP address from a router with the DHCP service enabled. The common practice is setting a fixed IP address, subnet mask, and default gateway. Applying the configuration will restart the intelligent valve again. After the restart, your mobile device should automatically reconnect and show the intelligent valve. The ABT Go app can store the backup on the mobile phone that can be loaded later on. The function Restore to Default resets all settings except the network settings and the device password. A hardware reset puts the intelligent valve back to factory default. Push both buttons simultaneously. Both LEDs must flash yellow slowly for 10 seconds, then release when flashing quickly. What determines whether the intelligent valve is heating or cooling? The heating or cooling behavior of the intelligent valve depends on the measured primary return and flow temperatures. If the primary flow temperature is higher than the return temperature, the valve is in heating mode. If the primary flow temperature is lower than the return temperature, the valve is in cooling mode. Let's take a campus network as an example for the commissioning workflow. The campus consists of three buildings. Each building's design power consumption is 360 kilowatt supplied by a boiler plant with a maximum capacity of 1,000 kilowatt. The design flow temperature supplied by the classic boiler plant is 90 degrees Celsius and the return temperature is 70 degrees Celsius. The boiler plant provides a total volume flow of 43 cubic meters per hour of which approximately one-third is supplied to each building. Let's proceed with commissioning the intelligent valve for the radiant heating loop in building A. In this first commissioning step, we set the volume flow range. From the dashboard, tap Balancing and change the flow units if needed. Adjust the maximum volume flow to 5.1. If the minimum volume flow limitation is required, it must be enabled beside setting the value. Now we consider the valve's flow characteristics. Open the commissioning menu and select Valve. The valve type and the nominal pipe size are fixed values given by the actual installed valve, matched to the connected flow sensor. Since the valve is installed in the return pipe, we can leave the mounting position default setting. In keeping with our example, we leave the control mode default setting at volume flow. This means that pressure changes in the system will be compensated by the valve position. 
If power is controlled, the valve compensates for different load conditions. It is also possible to control the valve position directly. The next parameter is the compensation mode, where we set one of the three valve characteristic curves, linear, equal percentage, or heat exchanger. The compensation mode, volume flow linear, derives the valve characteristic curve based on a valve coefficient equal to one. This is recommended for water-to-water -water plate heat exchangers or injection circuits in pre-control groups. The compensation mode, volume flow equal percentage, is used for air-water heat exchangers when the A value is unknown and derives the valve characteristic curve based on the valve coefficient NGL value. With the compensation mode, heat exchanger optimized set the coefficient A value to derive the inverted valve characteristic curve. In the commissioning menu, tap Limitation. We set the design primary flow and return temperatures according to our example. The displayed design power is calculated by multiplying the maximum volume flow with the design primary flow and return temperature difference. The maximum power is used only in combination with a management system. The management system is capable to prioritize the intelligent valve's maximum power in terms of greatest need. For example, Let's assume that one of the two boilers shuts down causing a 500 kilowatt reduction in the total power delivered. To compensate this reduction, the intelligent valve's maximum power setting, either as a fixed value or as a percent of the design power comes into an effect. Enabling the return temperature limitation for heating or cooling application results in additional cost savings. Here is an example of a heating application. The return temperature set point for heating tracks the design primary return temperature. As soon as the measured temperature in the return pipe is higher than the return temperature set point, the intelligent valve reduces the volume flow. In cooling systems, the intelligent valve reduces the volume flow if the measured temperature in the return pipe is lower than the temperature set point for cooling. Finally, we enter values for the gain and delay time according to the table shown. Now that we have completed the commissioning, it's time to do a self-test. Before performing the self-test, make sure you have filled in the account information. This information is part of the report. Navigate to the Balancing menu. Tap the self-test and start it. The application runs through a series of checks. As you can see, it tests the maximum volume flow. After that, it tries to reach the nominal volume flow of 7, which is not relevant for a positive test result. After performing a self-test, you can create a self-test report which is stored on the mobile phone. The self-test confirmation indication on the dashboard is present as long as there is no restart. Select the test report and share it. The operating menu allows to check current values as well as possible error messages. Let's demonstrate a scenario. The facility manager receives a complaint that the heating is not working properly and instructs the technician to check the hydraulic system. When observing the intelligent valve, the technician recognizes the red flashing LED, enters the operation menu, and selects the alarm window. Immediately, the technician sees the fault message relative set point fault. 
Further investigation reveals the relative set point is configured to the terminal. However, the intelligent valve is not receiving the 0 to 10 volt from the automation system. The technician solves the wiring issue that triggered the fault message and checks the fault status again. Just to be sure the system is back to normal, the technician checks the present set point volume flow and the present volume flow. You have reached the end of this e-learning. If you want to know more about the intelligent valve integration into Dozigo, watch the next video.